Good morning everybody and welcome to our worship. It's lovely to see you all and a very warm welcome too to Motherwell South Parish Church. It's a Tuesday morning here. You might be watching on a Sunday but for me it's a Tuesday and a Tuesday is when we have our cafe in Motherwell South. Now the cafe is back up and running. It's not as busy as it used to be but it's getting busier and busier with each passing week. So if you're in Motherwell and you fancy some of the, the finest home baking you will find anywhere then come along 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock every Tuesday in Motherwell South. Let us worship God. Well, today in our service we are continuing a theme that we began a few weeks ago and that is looking at people of faith. We've looked at Lydia, the seller of purple cloth. We've looked at some of the famous Olympians who are taking part in this year's Olympic Games and Paralympic Games. And last week, of course, we looked at Joseph and his Technicolor Dreamcoat. Well, today we're looking at someone called Zechariah. He's a little known character who appears in the New Testament. We're going to hear more about him in due course. But firstly, come with me and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once, when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Then 
an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord, in the spirit and power of Elijah, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he had seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. Come wash your 
guilt away We're going to meet today somebody called Zechariah. Now, Zechariah appears in the New Testament in the basically the story of Christmas. It's the bit before Christmas. So Mary is visited by an angel. She's told that she's going to have a baby. She's to call him Jesus. Before that happens, we meet Zechariah. What do we know about Zechariah? We know he's a priest and we know that he's an old man. Now, we've really got to go back to, we're really thinking almost Old Testament times here. Zechariah serves as a priest. And he has been chosen to represent the people. And on this annual event, he is allowed to take their prayers and offer their prayers to God. He was chosen not by a body of cardinals coming together and electing him, not by a committee uh, deciding who will be moderator of the General Assembly, but he's chosen by lot. But... It's still a once in a lifetime opportunity. Priests would have waited their entire lives and probably not had this opportunity. Zechariah gets it in his old age. And his job is basically to go into the temple, not just any part of the temple, but the holy place in the temple, right up to the veil that separates the holy place from the holy of holies. The holy of holies, of course, was, was where Jews believed God dwelt. The Spirit of God dwelt in the Holy of Holies. And Zechariah is allowed to go into the holy place, right up to the veil, to the golden altar of incense. And on that altar of incense, he offers the prayers of the people. How does he do that? Well, he would have been gowned in white and he would have taken his sandals off. That was all to do with Moses back in the Old Testament. Remember Moses in the burning bush and Moses is about to approach the burning bush when suddenly he hears the voice of God saying, take your sandals off because you are walking on holy ground. Zechariah was walking on holy ground, so he is unsandaled. And he, he offers the prayers by pouring incense onto this this altar, this burning altar. There was always, there was always a, a flame on the altar. And the smoke that arose would have been a, a fragrant perfume. And that would have been representative of the prayers going up to God. This beautiful aroma wafting up to God. Now, the interesting thing is that, that something happens during all of this. The people are waiting outside for Zechariah to come and explain to them what God's message is. But when Zechariah goes outside, he cannot speak. He's been struck dumb. And a bit like that old game show that used to be on television, where they had to say, you know, five words, first word, two syllables. Je Zechariah has to, has to mime to the people what the message was that God gave to him. And it's a very strange message because an angel appeared to Zechariah when he was in the temple. And the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. 
it's a bit of a strange answer to his prayers, which makes me wonder, what prayer did he offer? Did he actually just forget about the people and go into the temple and say, right, this is my one moment, this is my one chance? And did he say to God, look, God, I know I've got you in my own just now, but how about Elizabeth and I have a son? We've longed for a son for a long time. Could you oblige? No, I don't think so. I think his prayer was much, much bigger than that. I think he took his priestly duty very seriously. I think he's gone into the temple, into the holy place, and he has prayed for redemption for these folk. He has prayed for salvation for these people. They are living under the weight of the Roman Empire. They are living under a religious system that requires adherence to written laws, man-made laws. He sees the people groaning, longing for a saviour. And I think that's his prayer. I think he prays for something amazing. I think he prays for God to break through into their lives. And the prayer is answered, perhaps in a way that Zechariah couldn't understand, by giving him a son. That son was to become John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was to pave the way for Jesus Christ. Because John the Baptist is the one who really who stirs up the people, who rocks the boat, who says to them, things are not going well, you need to change. Repent and be baptised, he says. In other words, turn round, change the direction your lives are going in. But then he also says, there is one coming who is greater. And he is being sent by God. And of course, he's referring to Jesus Christ. So he really prepares the way for Jesus Christ. And Zechariah's prayer is being answered in the most incredible way. And so we've got another period of waiting. A waiting for nine months for the birth of John, John the Baptist. And then the arrival of Jesus himself. So there's lots of waiting in all of this. And that is really what I want us to focus on today. Waiting. We are not accustomed to waiting. We like everything like that. If we're unwell, we phone NHS 24, we get a diagnosis. If we want to be fed, we put something in the microwave, two minutes later, ping, it's ready. But of course, in the last 18 months, we've been forced to wait. We've had to wait for a vaccine. We've had to wait for a pandemic to come to an end. We've had to wait through months of winter lockdown. How difficult was that? But of course, there are other things that we have to wait for in our lives. Some people will have to wait for, for forgiveness. Some people will be waiting for healing. Others will be waiting for, for some kind of restoration, for some kind of wholeness in their lives. Some will be waiting for faith. We wait for different things in our lives. And I think the important thing for today is we're all waiting on something. What are you waiting for? What's important is how we wait. A bit like a rope, our waiting should be lots of different strands kind of interwoven together because the more strands there are, the stronger our relationship with God during those times of waiting. So here are some strands that I might offer to you today and I hope that they stand as in good stead. The first strand, uh, keeping your focus on God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 3 encourages to keep our focus on God. That's difficult in a world where we're constantly taken away from God and taken towards the secular. We're taken towards the importance of possessions, the importance of, of likes on Facebook. But keeping our focus on God is something very different to that. The second strand, studying our Bible daily. Psalm 119 verse 11 reminds us of the importance of coming before God's word. Um, if that's something you struggle with, then can I encourage you to download the Lectio 365 app with a daily devotion, one in the morning and one at night. A really good way to focus on the Bible and to pray. And number three, pray daily. If we're not praying to God, then that relationship is going to be incredibly loose. Number four, attend church regularly. Yes, we're going back to church probably towards the end of August. We have a Wednesday service too. 
coming to church is important, I think. How will you wait for Jesus Christ? Will it be with a blank stare? Or will it be with a surge of exciting anticipation? Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>